Hey guys, welcome to New Wildlife. In today's video, I'm going to show you my top tips for taking wildlife reference photos at the zoo. So a couple of days ago, myself and Amber spent the day at Chester Zoo. If you haven't been, I highly recommend going. It's a really educational place. And we spent the day looking for good opportunities to take reference photos. And I thought I'd share that day out with you guys and explain a little bit more about how I, or my thought process when I'm actually taking those reference photos for use in my artworks. So I'm not gonna spend this video talking about camera settings. I'm brand new to cameras. I don't really understand how they work yet. I am learning as I go. So I'm not gonna talk about ISO, shutter speed, aperture, things like that, because it confuses me and I'm still not sure what they mean. So I'm not gonna to talk to you about that either. What I am gonna to talk to you about is how I go about taking wildlife photos, how I go about thinking and planning my day when I go to the zoo, and how I actually use those reference photos at the end of the day to create a piece of art. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It means so much to us. We really appreciate it. Anyway, let's get started. So we're on our way to Chester Zoo and we are getting up pretty early, not super early, about eight o'clock because the zoo opens at 10. And I would say one of my big tips for taking photos at zoos is make sure you're there right at the start of the day. Make sure you're there as soon as it opens when those animals are active and they are up and about and you can get some interesting photos and the light is really good. Just waiting on Amber. The tickets didn't print off properly so she's gone back into the house to go and get them and then we'll make a start and head on our way. <laughs> so we've arrived at the zoo and Amber, what do you want to go and see first? The tigers. The tigers, okay. <laughs> so. Bringing you to my next big tip is when you get there, go with an idea of what you want to see because you need to spend a bit of time there, don't you really, to get some good pictures. And if you're looking for good pictures, you want to make sure that you are targeting your day out at the zoo rather than just wandering around hoping for a good picture. <laughs> I'm currently just speed walking on our way to the tigers. <laughs> Quick! <laughs> So we got to the tigers and there is nothing here. So what do you want to go do next? Do you want to look at that indoor bit? Yeah. Okay, orangutans. let's go look at the orangutans then. So this next point sort of contradicts point number two. And this one is don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yes, have a game plan. Yes, have an idea of what it is you want to take a photo of, but don't be too disappointed if you can't get a good photo. You don't want to spend all day waiting around for something that is just not going to happen. The day could be different, the animals could be in a bad mood, the light might not be right, the enclosure for the specific zoo that you're going to might not be that good. But it's better to walk around and have a little sort of a random look at opportunistic photos of different animals, things that you maybe didn't expect you'd see or didn't expect you'd get. And if it is a specific animal that you're after, then maybe you have to go to a specific zoo to see a specific enclosure at a specific time of day. Whereas myself and Amber for this one, we were just wandering around looking for random opportunities where we could just take a good reference photo. It was just a day out rather than a specific reference hunting trip. That being said, point number four is about patience. Don't just stick around at an enclosure for five minutes. We like to spend a good 20 minutes to half an hour at that enclosure just in case something happens. I've known professional photographers who will actually stick around and wait for days and sometimes weeks over multiple trips to get that perfect photo. We aren't that focused on getting that perfect photo because we are gonna turn it into a piece of artwork so we can do all of our edits with the paint or the charcoal or whatever it is medium we are using. So, no look with the tigers, we are going to go and look for the painted dogs instead. Next up, point number five. This is about focusing on the eye. So if you have a look, 
whenever you're looking at this picture or you're looking at a video, the eyes are the thing that you focus on most. It's said that the eyes are the windows to the soul. And by actually focusing on those eyes, you can get a real sense of intimacy and closeness and character for the animal that you're trying to photograph. That makes such a big difference when you are coming to turn this into a painting or if you're just planning on trying to sell it as a photography fine art print. Another thing that helps to establish that personal connection, that point number six, is take your reference photos close to the ground. Hey, I can't tell you how dirty I am at the end of the day because I've just spent the day kneeling in muddy puddles, lying down, trying to get a good angle of the animal that I'm trying to photograph. Being low down really gives the sense that the animal is above you. Hey, rather than the other way around, rather than we are looking at a zoo, we are looking at that animal down through a cage, we want that sense of wild, we want that sense of real encounter with that specific animal. And the best way to do that is to get as low as possible, which then gives that photograph the sense that that animal is in control, it's more powerful, it's above you in charge. And that gives us a real sense of closeness and a connection with that particular animal, with the photograph, and gives us a much better reference photo. And then finally, point number seven. This is the most important for me, especially in the way that I work with my charcoals. I look for photographs and subjects that are strongly lit with one single direction of light. This is best really early in the morning, so brings us back to point one, get there really early, and really late in the evening as the sun is setting, when we have that strong sense of light coming from one direction. It really helps to have that one single light source that really adds a lot of contrast, a lot of light to one side of that animal, which means it's really lit up on one side and it gives a real sense of contrast between the highlights and the shadows. Perfect, especially for my charcoal drawings and Amber's resins that she does on the black background. So I hope you found these useful. I'm now going to show you some of the pictures that I took and show you how I go about creating an image from these pictures. I would edit these photos, I would use a bit of Photoshop, I would add some contrast, add some splatters, whatever, to make it more interesting to start using as a reference photo. But for this, I just used a reference photo that I took because I just thought it was a fantastic photo, especially with the light that was hitting it, which just brings us back to that point seven that I mentioned earlier. The light was just so good, I couldn't not paint it. So anyway, I'll show you the process now. 